Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Can we talk with Monique? I am Monique and thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified of any current uploads of videos or podcasts. So this particular podcast, um, and thank everyone who's already subscribed. I appreciate you. And um, I look forward to sharing uh, additional information with you. But this particular podcast is entitled Narcissist Play in the Summer and Hoover in the Fall and in the Winter. So let's talk about it. A lot of us are um, on these channels who are learning about narcissism and uh, becoming aware of narcissists and their behavior. Um, and a lot of us are in recovery, and we've learned a lot. Um, and we start to look at the patterns of the behavior that these narcissists tend to exhibit. But one of the things um, in my journey, because it's definitely been a journey for me, um, and you can look at some of my videos on my channel, and you can look at some of the things that I speak about, but essentially, um, my journey has turned into... Uh, almost like my testimony, you know, my mess has become my message. And um, even though interacting and having to have come in contact with individuals with this narcissistic personality disorder and toxic individuals, I've really kind of um, grown into my purpose and it's really turned into a ministry for me. So I'm taking this very, very seriously that this is something that is a part of my purpose and destiny. And like I said, it's become a ministry for me to educate others about this. And for those of you who are in different stages of healing, take the pain, take some of the things that you've learned, take some of the uh, things that have occurred and uh, don't let it just encompass you, but take it and do something with it. Flip it upside down and turn it into something that is beneficial to you, okay? And that's what I am doing and that's what I intend to do. This is my ministry here. This is how I'm going to reach other people to help them to either get out of these situations and get encouragement um, and not have their destiny thwarted because I truly believe uh, these entities come into our lives to thwart our purpose our goals, and um, the bright futures that we have ahead. So let's talk about um, the narcissist playing in the summer and who were in the fall and winter. And as we know, these narcissists, they have a pattern to them. You know, they operate, some are covert, some are overt and out in the open, but essentially they play some of the same games. And one of the things, you know, I've watched other YouTubers but one of the things from my experience, I see that during the summer months, you know, they're just like players. You know, they're out there playing. It's warm, you know. And I think that's their time where they just like to be out and about and to get their uh, sources of supply. Because, you know, everybody's out, scantily dressed. Some people, you know, not in their cars. So it's easier, I think, in the winter time. I mean, in the summertime. For them when it's warm to get sources of supply so the narcs are narking and playing in the summer and then gathering up their Hiram you know throughout those months um, and then if they've discarded you what I see is during the fall and the cold months if you've been a if you were in a good source of supply for them they will hoover you or try to capture somebody else if they discarded those other sources of supply in the summer. They want to hurry up and capture somebody else so that they can have adequate sources of supply for the winter time because it's cold so that they basically could have somebody to lay up with. Maybe they need a place to stay, um, you know, because it's all about wanting something or getting something from someone um, in the narcissist's mind. So they're out there hunting, narking, 
you know, trying to find sources of supply so they could stay laid up during the winter time, you know, and have nice warm beds that they can hop to and fro. Uh, they might be having some financial issues. They might be getting evicted. They may need a place to stay. So they will hoover back to those other sources of supply to see if they can get you. So what I would like to say is just be careful. I know a lot of people think, well, you know, I haven't been hoovered. That's a good thing. But always be prepared in your mind um, and know that these people may hoover you. And when they do, they may come with a sob story. They may come with needing some financial help. And granted, the narcissist may have helped you in the past, but anytime a narcissist does help or provide something or monetary, it's always, there's always something behind it. So you might be remembering in your mind where the narcissist may have given you money or something. And so when they hoover you, you might think, well, dang, they gave me such and such when I needed it. So they're down and out. Let me help them. I'm here to tell you, don't do it. That's exactly why they gave you what they gave you. A narcissist doesn't give you anything because they really care or they really want to help. They keep tabs. And so they want you to think about the time where they may have provided you with a couple of dollars or help you pay a bill. So when they come to Hoover you, you will be more apt to let them in. So this is the behavior. I see it. You know, I was Hoover recently in the past couple of weeks. And I haven't heard from this particular narcissist in well over a year. No contact. And these people will hoover you. I was hoovered by email. I did not respond because they want you to respond in any type of way. And it was a hoover asking for money. And I just looked at it and was like, seriously? But um, we have to be mindful of their tricks, you know, and their buffoonery. And, you know, their skullduggery. We have to stay abreast and stay awoke. And that's why um, a lot of these channels are very, very helpful. Because sometimes we're going through different phases of recovery, you know. Or we may be in the early stages of leaving. And we have a lot on our mind. And, you know, these narcissists are here to confuse you. And not to make anything very plainly clear but to add more confusion and and, and um, disorder in your life so definitely I would say they gather up their harem and they play in the summertime and then they try to secure and lock you down for the winter so that way it's cold out there they don't have to be out in the cold or looking. It's easy, I think, to get sources of supplies um, in the summertime than it is probably in the winter because people are probably in the house all the time. So just to warn you, we're going into the fall months. And so if a narcissist or anyone comes in your life and they are in that mode of trying to secure and lock down or they're trying to move too fast, you may have encountered a narcissist who is trying to secure their source of supply for these fall and winter months, and then the spring and the summer come, and they will discard you. So I'm wondering if any of you guys have had experiences like this. Um, I don't know if there are any statistics out there, but I'm willing to bet that discard phases probably take place both for narcissists. They don't care when they discard you. But I'm almost thinking that people probably get discarded more so in the summertime and then in the wintertime, um, you know, the narcissist kind of has their, uh, their supplies secured uh, so that way they can have you during the fall and winter months and then in the spring and the summer, they're out on the prowl and the hunt again. And why I call it prowling and hunting is because they target individuals. They truly do target 
specific people, specific personalities, specific things that they want. And so um, we just got to keep our eyes open, stay woke, and continue to formulate those healthy boundaries. And I always say, have a list of things that if someone crosses them, they don't get a do-over. Like, okay, if somebody does this, I'm done. I call it the wrong and done. Okay? Because if you don't have those boundaries, that is what allows these narcissists to get in. But definitely, these narcissists, they be knocking. Um, they're always on the prowl, always looking, you know, going through that cycle of idealization, you know, you know, they'll discard, you know, and then they just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. So narcissists definitely, um, they don't do anything new. They may change up, but their MO is typically the same. Um, they may have to change up a few things, but, you know, the whole love bombing, idealization, you know, that, that whole phase that they go through, they go through those steps, um, and they just rinse and repeat and do the same thing over and over again. So, like I said, guys, this is, um, you know, my experience has become my testimony, you know, because in order for other people to learn, sometimes you just have to tell them your story and tell them how you were able to get through it and where you are today. And it's become my ministry because I truly believe, like I said, and, and for those of you who are not believers, that's fine. Don't tune out because we can learn something from everyone. But for those of you who are believers, I truly believe this is a spirit, a Jezebel spirit that comes um, and targets individuals to thwart their light. Uh, they see the light in us. They see the good in us. And they come to thwart that uh, purpose. And this could have been from, you know, childhood. Uh, you may have had such a difficult childhood and gone through so much. Um, but I truly believe it's because of uh, the special gifts and talents and um, purpose that we had here on this earth. So what better way to thwart that than or to counteract that but to send an agent <laughs> of darkness, hence the narcissist or the toxic person with the Jezebel spirit to thwart that because most of these people like you already know when you're in relationships with them nothing good happens everything just goes downhill your health your finances even your mental well-being can go downhill so they kind of destroy things right so um this is my testimony this has become my ministry and I take it very, very seriously. And for those of you who don't know, October, I think, is Mental Health Awareness Month. And, um, um, you know, a lot of people coming out of relationships with people with who are, have narcissist, narcissistic personality disorder or NPD, they may have suffered, you know, post-traumatic stress syndrome. They may have some anxiety issues um, because being in proximity to these people, something is going to happen to you. So because this is Mental Health Awareness Month, um, it's imperative that if you are facing some of those things, to try to find the right provider or therapist to help you through some of these things. And also for those believers, I believe that prayer and um being delivered, if you know what I mean, from some of these entities is true. There, it, that's truly important, and I'll touch base on that. I'm gonna do a podcast on the Jezebel spirit, um, and um, what we can do to try to help ourselves relieve ourselves from some of that, um, um, from some of those entities. But definitely, it is um, Mental Health Awareness Month, and if you are feeling like you need to talk to somebody, I am going to research, um, there's a particular website where you can find, um, and I think this has been vetted by 
others in the health, the mental health arena, where you can find low cost or even sliding scale uh, therapy or therapists, I think. And I think they can do uh, some therapy online or over the phone, especially with the advent of the internet and Skype and all of that and Zoom. I think you can get some services that way versus going directly into a, a, an office. So definitely we want to take care of ourselves. Uh, we want to make sure we start to heal. And I, so I just want to bring that out just to be aware of these narcissists trying to secure. They're always trying to secure supply. But I also think they try to lock the supply down for especially for the winter and the fall months when it's cold and they can't readily get outside. Um, but if they need supply, you know, no matter what the weather it is, I'm sure, you know, they'll try to get supply in the bank or at the grocery store, wherever they can, if they're desperate in need of supply. But as I always say, you have one life, own your life. Okay, people, and I will talk to you on the next upload of Can We Talk with Monique. Have a great night. Peace.